I, the incident I'll be talking about today happened between me, 23 female, and my stepbrother, 23 male. And let's call him Tom for the story's sake. I was adopted by my stepfather during my preteens after my biological father left my mother for someone he liked. My mother had not been in great health, so his reason was that he couldn't take her burden. After the divorce, my mom met my stepdad at the hospital where he was treating her as a doctor. They felt a connection and soon got married. My stepfather was widowed and had a son, Tom. Tom didn't like me and my mom from the get-go. At first, both parents thought it was a reaction to a new dynamic. But Tom's behavior didn't change much over the years. He wasn't blatantly cruel to me and my mom, but he was generally distant and extremely rude. For example, we both went to the same school, but he wouldn't acknowledge me as his sister or invite me to play with his friends. Soon after their marriage, my mother fell extremely ill and it was revealed that she was suffering from stage four cancer and wouldn't live much longer. It was then that my stepdad decided to adopt me so that I would have someone to call family after my mother passed away. Even at my mother's passing, Tom didn't get involved much. Instead, he planned a vacation with his friends on the day of my mother's wake. And after his father's repeated insistence and a lot of drama, he cancelled it. My stepdad had been extremely nice to me throughout my childhood and never made me feel like an outsider. But he was so busy with his work that he was barely home. So with just Tom and me together, many silly fights happened. One thing I realized about him was that he was a spoiled brat. Tom was an above average student, but couldn't get into a good college. I, on the other hand, was extremely meritorious and knew I would get into a great college. We both had plans to go to med school after graduation, with his motive being the money and my motive being to become like my stepdad. We rarely saw each other once we left for college, only during holidays with dad. I had no contact with him outside our house and it was during our biannual family gatherings that I found out about him splurging his time and money on partying with friends, but I didn't care. As soon as we finished our graduation, we both attempted the med school entrance exam. I got in on the first attempt, whereas Tom failed. From that point on, his dislike for me turned into jealousy. My stepdad was elated at my achievement and planned a short vacation for a week to Cambodia for me and Tom. Tom hesitated at first but agreed after dad convinced him by assuring him that he would personally oversee Tom's progress for his next attempt. I was just excited to have some free time after so much hard work. We had our flight late in the evening, so in the afternoon, my stepdad showed up in my room a little stressed. I asked him what was up, and that's when he told me that it might not be possible for me to go on the vacation with them. I was confused and asked what was going on. He told me that Tom was snooping around his closet to find some old books my stepdad had, and that's where he found these medical reports that belonged to me. He told me that my mother hadn't ever shown these to him and they said that I had a heart condition since childhood which made it unsafe for me to travel by airplane. For clarity's sake, my college was a one-hour ride from my hometown so I had almost never taken a flight during all these years. I looked at the reports and they seemed real. I was pretty bummed out and my stepdad decided to cancel the trip altogether. I didn't like that because he was quite excited about the trip as well, so I forced him to go with Tom and assured him that I would be fine having a quiet weekend at home. After a lot of back and forth, him and Tom finally decided to go on the vacation. The next week was more eventful for me than I had thought. My stepdad used to constantly send me pictures from his vacation and I reacted to them very half-heartedly just for his sake. 
I was pretty curious about the medical reports and decided to research the heart problem I supposedly had. With the help of Google and some friends I had made while prepping for the entrance, I realized that the disease was hereditary. Since I had a lot of time on my hands, I decided to find my mom's report and see if she had it, which, to my surprise, she did not. Then I thought it might have been from my dad's side. My biological dad was not a very good person and had gone to jail a few times and was currently in one. So I thought I might ask for his medical information from the jail since I needed to know it for my own health. They told me he would have to sign for access and they'd get back to me if they could give it to me. I didn't think it would happen, but two days later, I got a call from the station asking me to collect the medical report since my bio dad had signed them. Even he did not have the disease mentioned in my reports. Only two options were left. One was that I wasn't my bio dad's child. And the second, that the reports were false. Only the second option made sense because in my mother's reports, I had found a paternity test for me. Apparently, my bio dad wasn't very sure of my mom and had gotten a paternity test on, which proved that I was my parents' child indeed. As soon as I realized this, I called my friends and let them know how confused I was about all of this. One of them told me that it was pretty easy to forge medical reports for a certain amount of money. On hearing this, my first doubt went towards Tom because he was the one who had found the reports and given them to dad. I ran to his room and began to search. It felt wrong to invade his privacy, but I needed to know the truth. In his desk drawer, under a pile of papers, I found a draft of the medical reports. There were notes in Tom's handwriting detailing how to create a convincing forgery. I was shocked at the revelation. I knew he didn't like me, but I didn't expect him to go this far to actually exclude me. I also found a suspicious looking diary lying there, but I was too shocked to look beyond the reports. I wanted to tell my dad right then about what had happened, but decided not to spoil his trip. The next day, when I was finally able to gather my thoughts, I decided to go back to Tom's room and clean it up a bit. I stumbled upon that black diary again, and after a lot of consideration, I decided to open and read it. What I found was something I couldn't have imagined in my wildest dreams. The diary had daily entries of money Tom had spent during college. A lot of it went to a few people only, and their numbers were given up against their names. I gathered all the courage I had and called one of those numbers. On talking, I realized they were the numbers of some loan sharks. On getting further details under the false pretext of Tom being gone missing and me, his sister looking for him through his contacts, I realized that these guys had lent him a lot of money. He had lost in gambling. On looking further in the diary, I found one of his roommate's phone numbers and decided to call him. I asked him about Tom and he told me everything. This guy wasn't in contact with Tom for the last three years. They were roommates for the first year, but Tom wasn't serious about his college and had gotten into drugs and gambling during the first six months. He tried to get Tom back on the right path and away from distractions, but after a point, he decided it was best to mind his own business and apply for a room change later. Since my stepdad had ample money, he had funded our education so far and used to send tuition and a little expense money whenever required. Tom had developed a gambling addiction and left college after a year, as per his roommate. He used to take money from loan sharks for gambling and would pay it back to them with a fee our father gave him. Nobody in our family, including our extended family, knew about this. Tom could appear in the entrance exam without a degree, but even if he had passed, there was no chance that he could have gotten into med school because he didn't have a pre-med degree. It took me a few hours to process this information and what a fraud Tom actually was. 
Earlier, I wasn't sure about why he didn't want me to go on the vacation with them, but now, with a lot of things unclear, I just impatiently waited for my stepdad and Tom to come back the day after tomorrow. My stepdad and Tom returned on the expected day. They both looked pretty happy, but had no idea how bad things were about to get. After they had both relaxed a little, I asked Dad if I could talk to him about something. Tom made a face and stood up to leave, but I stopped him and asked him to stay as well, since it was crucial. I first showed my dad my reports and asked if he knew where these reports were from. He said that since they were made before he married my mother, he had no idea about the source because he wasn't very familiar with my mom's town. I could see Tom's face turning red beside him. He asked why, and I told him about all the little research I had done over the weekend and how I found out that there was no way I could have had this disease. I hadn't told him about Tom so far, just to give Tom a chance to come clean on his own, but he sat there quietly, all scared. After rechecking the reports of my biological dad and mom, my stepdad got confused as well. And that's when I asked Tom if he would like to step in. His face turned pale and he shook his head in a no while simultaneously playing with his phone. I then proceeded to tell my dad everything about how I had found the fake reports in Tom's room and asked a few of my friends who told me about the possibility of the reports being fake. My dad was as shocked as I was the first time and turned towards Tom, who was on the verge of tears. I decided that I'd first get the answer about why he wanted to exclude me from the vacation and then reveal the truth about his fake life. Dad began shouting at him, asking where he got the reports from and what was the need for him to do something like this. He stayed quiet for the longest time before finally breaking his silence. He said that after my mom had passed, our dad paid a lot more attention to me than him. He had always resented me for stealing his dad from him. And that limit was crossed once I cleared the medical entrance exam and he could not. He claimed there was no malice on his side behind this step. He just wanted to spend a week with his dad alone. He also told my stepdad that he got the reports from a college friend of his who had some connections. My stepdad was extremely pissed at him and was too angry even to look at him. He turned his face towards me and with tears in his eyes, apologized for Tom's idiotic behavior. Tom, on the other hand, was also profusely crying, asking for an apology from both me and his dad. I hugged dad and told him he had nothing to do with this and turned towards Tom. Then I asked him if he still wanted to tell something to our dad before I revealed the truth. My stepdad was extremely confused at this and Tom realized what was going on. His tears immediately stopped and he ran to his room. Before I could tell my stepdad anything, he came back from his room with a bag on his shoulder. Dad tried to get hold of him, but he stormed out of the house and sat outside in an Uber he had called. My stepdad was too frazzled by all of this and sat down to calm himself. We've now been trying to contact Tom via calls constantly, only for him not to pick up. I still haven't told my stepdad about his alternative life because I fear it could take a toll on him right now and to toy with his health is the last thing I would do. I'll tell him as soon as I find the right time, till we hear something from Tom, who left in a frenzy. Update 1. So after Tom had left, we got a call from his maternal aunt, who had seen him pass by her house in the car, and asked if he was there to visit. Some news of Tom calmed my stepdad down, and he asked her if Tom had stopped by. She said he hadn't, but she'd call him and ask if he wished to spend the night because she felt something was wrong. Dad thanked her and hung up. A few hours later, he got a text from the aunt saying that Tom was with her safe. My stepdad immediately got ready to leave and bring Tom back home. 
This was the right time. I asked him to wait and sit down because there was something much bigger I wished to reveal to him. I went into my room and got Tom's diary. I had sneaked it away the day I found it and kept it hidden as proof. I showed him the diary and told him everything from Tom taking loans to him leaving college after the first year. My stepdad on hearing this held his head in his hands, just trying to process this. We finally decided that now wasn't the time to bring Tom back home, at least until my stepdad could make sense of Tom's fraud. Over the next three days, my stepdad constantly kept in touch with Tom's aunt to know about Tom's whereabouts. The aunt's behavior changed towards my stepdad after a day or two. And on asking, she revealed that Tom had told her the reason he ran away from home. My stepdad, all perplexed, asked her why she was being rude to him if that was the case. She said she obviously wouldn't want to talk to someone who is treating their son so harshly and so blatantly practicing favoritism towards their stepdaughter. My stepdad got extremely angry at this and asked Tom's aunt to shut up and told her the truth. She didn't believe her at first, but once he sent her the fake reports Tom had forged, she got quiet and said she talked to my stepdad later after talking to Tom once she got back home from work. That same night, my stepdad got a call from Tom's aunt, who said that Tom had quietly left her house while she was at work and took with him a bundle of cash she had kept for emergencies in a hidden drawer. She also said he left her a letter saying that he was heading to his grandparents' house in another state and would appreciate it if his dad didn't know about him. My stepdad at this point was so frustrated with Tom and his shenanigans that he decided not to waste time finding out where Tom was. He directly called his mom and dad, who didn't pick up his calls. They both rarely use anything related to modern tech, and even the phones they have are for emergencies. So he wrote them a letter asking them to call him immediately after Tom reached them. Update 2. It has been a week since the last update and a lot has gone down. My step-grandparents do live in a not-so-far state, so the letter reached them within two days. Tom had arrived at their house before the letter and had no idea about it. He told the same, Dad isn't treating me right, story to his grandparents, who chose to believe him. They called my dad and asked him to meet them as soon as he could because it was urgent. My dad took me with him and we flew out the same night. On reaching there, dad immediately started looking for Tom, who was nowhere to be found. Tom's grandma led us into the living room and asked my stepdad to calm down. Tom's grandpa told my stepdad that Tom was safe in his own room, but wouldn't meet us because he feared something terrible might happen if we met. My stepdad immediately told him the whole deal about Tom, how he had run away, stealing his aunt's money with proof, and how he needed to be held accountable. Grandpa told him he knew this story was a fake one because my stepdad wanted to give me everything from his will, as told to them by Tom. My stepdad tried to convince him it was fake, but Tom had gotten some fake documents stating it was my dad's will, which mentioned how he planned on giving me everything. My stepdad tried to explain to his father that he never had a will, but all the efforts were futile. After a lot of fighting and not getting to see Tom, we decided to leave. Before leaving, Tom's grandma told my dad that he was going to give Tom all the inheritance that was supposed to be my stepdad's. My stepdad was shocked at this and it looked like he got emotional at the prospect of his own family turning against him. But he felt so defeated in front of his dad that he decided to leave without a word. While leaving, we saw Tom looking down at us from his room's window with a very sorry face. My stepdad was extremely stressed over all this and I felt bad for being the bearer of bad news. He comforted me and told me none of it was my fault and that I should be prepared to leave for med school next month. He was now done with Tom and was actually going to remove his name from his own will. He wanted to have a final confrontation with Tom for some answers as to why he was doing this. 
and then cut all contact with him update three so i'm writing this update a few days after the last one we hadn't been in contact with Tom or his grandparents, and honestly, at this point, my stepdad and I just wished to move on with our lives temporarily. I was packing for my med school, whereas dad got busy with his work. One day, he got a missed call from his parents. Since they don't really use phones, he assumed the worst and called them back, all worried. His mom was crying on the phone and couldn't say much. So his dad took the phone and he sounded tense as well. Before my stepdad could ask, his dad told him the whole incident. Apparently, right after we left Tom's grandparents' home, he came down from his room and cried in front of them. He told them how he was never going to get anywhere with no money and that his dreams of becoming a doctor might also just shatter. This led to them feeling pity for him and under the manipulation... They signed a check of 50000 which is a pretty huge amount, to him, but only for emergencies. The next day, Tom was again gone with the check, and this time he left no note or anything. They tried calling him, but the phone seemed to be perpetually switched off. My stepdad asked them to calm down on the phone and decided to let everyone know about Tom so that he wouldn't be able to manipulate anyone they knew anymore. He came home early that day and wrote a Facebook post describing everything Tom had done so far, including stealing from his aunt and his old grandparents. He mentioned clearly in that post to consider this a caution to not be another one of Tom's victims. The post got a lot of impressions. He then called Tom's aunt and invited her to our home along with his parents who were flying out that night. And when they met, he asked if they had gotten any calls from Tom, which both parties denied. Then he suggested filing a case against Tom if they wished to get back their lost money because he saw no other way to get hold of Tom. After a lot of hesitation and deliberation, they agreed. They all went to our local police station and filed a complaint of robbery and forgery against him. His grandparents apologized to my stepdad for not trusting him and he decided to send them back and take care of the case on their behalf. They left the next day. Update 4. I know this update has been long overdue but I got busy with college and I'm writing this update now that I'm back home for the Christmas weekend. Until I left for college there was no update on Tom and his whereabouts. I was a bit reluctant about leaving my stepdad alone to deal with the situation on his own, but he assured me he'd contact me as soon as he felt he needed me, so I left for college. The day after I left, my stepdad got a call from a prison in another state saying it was Tom who called him. He received the call and talked to Tom. Tom started to cry immediately and began explaining why he was there. Apparently, he had run away from his grandparents' home to a city near his hometown to stay with some of his college friends and gamble in the local casino. After enduring many losses, when he ran out of money, he went on to steal from an empty house only for the owners to see him through their home security camera and call the cops on him. Tom said he only remembered his dad's number and that's why he was calling him to bail him out. My stepdad was appalled at his audacity and cut the call without giving him a reply. He immediately called the police and let them know that Tom was caught under a robbery charge and asked if this could mean he could be tried for theft from his grandparents and aunt as well. The cop told him he'd check and let him know. A few hours later, my stepdad got to know that Tom was acquitted of the robbery charge because the homeowners realized it was planned by their own son and took back the case in fear of having their son go to jail. So Tom was now going to trial for manipulating and stealing money from his grandparents and his aunt. My stepdad got a chance to talk to Tom while he was getting out, and he didn't ask much, but just let Tom know that he shouldn't expect anything from him, and that they would go no contact at least till the trial was on. Tom was arrested and charged with multiple counts of fraud, theft, and identity theft. The case quickly became a focal point in the small community, drawing attention not just because of the crime, 
but because of the betrayal from the son of the family. The trial was scheduled for two weeks after Tom and my stepdad's talk. Tom's grandparents weren't able to attend the first hearing, but my stepdad and Tom's aunt were present in the courtroom. The prosecution laid out a compelling case. They presented evidence of forged documents, a copy of the 50,000 transaction, and the note Tom left for his aunt claiming that he had taken the money. They painted a picture of Tom as a manipulative and deceitful individual who had taken advantage of his family's trust for personal gain, which sounds a little harsh, but was absolutely true. On the next assigned date, Tom's aunt and his grandparents testified, claiming that they trusted Tom and helped him in his hour of need, only for him to use them for money. My dad also got to give testimony, during which he cried, explaining what Tom had done with the money for his education, which was able to persuade the jury to their side. The defense argued that Tom was not a hardened criminal, but a desperate man who had made poor decisions under immense financial pressure. They presented a narrative of a man who had fallen on hard times, suggesting that his actions, while wrong, were not driven by malice, but by desperation. Tom's lawyer emphasized his lack of a criminal record, appealing to the jury for a lenient sentence. The trial lasted for several weeks with testimonies from financial experts, character witnesses, and forensic analysts. The jury deliberated for two days before returning with a verdict, guilty on all counts. The judge, while acknowledging Tom's lack of prior offenses and the difficult circumstances, emphasized the severity of the crime and the breach of trust. Tom was sentenced to five years in prison with the possibility of parole after a year for good behavior, and he was asked to pay his aunt and grandparents, which at this point could have taken years. My stepdad got to talk to Tom before he was taken to jail. The only question he asked Tom was, why? Tom responded that he had felt lonely all his childhood and in high school, he developed friendships with people who were into drugs and such stuff. This is where his habit of gambling started and he had been using that money to maintain an alternative lifestyle way beyond what his father could actually provide for him. He had no idea when the fun and games turned into an addiction. And in his pursuit not to lose friends in college, he started to gamble way more than he could afford by taking loans from shady people. He continued that the loans were getting much heftier than what our dad sent. So the only option left for him was to pay back with the tuition fee. He claimed that he had realized his fraud might be revealed after he gave the entrance. When I clear the exam, he could see what his life could have been and got extremely jealous. And in that moment, he used his connections to get fake reports of me being ill. That triggered the domino effect and the results were in front of everyone. My stepdad was not in a state to say much and just left. I couldn't believe all that had gone down while I was at college and consoled my stepdad, who got emotional telling the story. Update 5. This will be the final update. It has now been six months since Tom was sentenced. My stepdad and his parents had completely cut off from Tom and didn't check on him while he was in jail. His aunt still pitied him and visited once in a while. Tom had written a letter from jail to me as he knew in which college I was studying. It was an apology for all he had done and an attempt to rekindle a relationship with the only family he had left. I decided to visit him once. He looked well and apologized profusely to me. I told him that there wasn't a relationship between us in the first place, so he shouldn't think of us meeting as a start to anything new, at least until I can get over it. He agreed and we decided to take it slow in building our relationship. He mentioned that seeing me work for my future had led him to reconsider his decisions and he wanted to continue his studies from prison. He asked if I could send him some resources for it over the years and I said yes because I believe people deserve second chances. I told my stepdad about it and he wasn't pleased, but said he wouldn't interfere as long as I was okay with it.
Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.